We've done four so far. This is our fifth reaction, and this is for combustion. This is on page 16 of your packet, and I actually think combustion is your easiest one. So unlike any of your other ones where you're having to either predict or actually, you know, make your products, you know automatically um, what your products are going to be. Always and no question you're going to get carbon dioxide, so CO2, and water. The challenging part of combustion reactions is balancing. So I'm going to work through just two of them with you, and then you're going to work on number three and number four on your own for homework. So this should actually be a really quick, nice, nice and easy video. All right. So um, what happens um, in combustion, you have a carbon, uh, hydrocarbon, which means you have hydrogen and carbon. All right. And oxygen is added to that. So you have plus O2. Okay. And what you get as a product is CO2 and H2O. All right, so let's look at this now. I am done already. It's really that easy. I don't have to cross charges. I don't have to look at my table and decide what's going to form with what. I don't have to do any of that. Um, I don't have to look at solubility rules. I don't have to do any of that. However, I do have to balance. And now, balancing combustion reactions can be a nightmare unless you follow the Cho rule. C H O. Alright? First balance carbons, then hydrogens, then oxygens. If you want to think about it, it's like Cho Chang, I think her name was from Harry Potter and fire coming out of her wand. That's perfectly fine. But this is the order in which you have to balance your elements. Alright? So let's look at it one step at a time. All right, first my carbons. I've got three carbons on this side and I've got one on this side. So I need to put a three out front here so I can have equal amounts of carbons on either side. All right, now hydrogens. I've got eight here, only two here. So I need to put a four out front there. Okay, now let's look at oxygens. And here's the tricky part. You've got to count them up. And so what I would recommend, you can either do it in your head if you're amazing, or um, if you can't keep track of things really well, I would write it down right underneath. So I've got three here. I've got two here since the three's out front. You need to multiply them. So you've got a total of six oxygens right here. Don't forget about these behind it. You've got four oxygens there. So you've got four plus six. So you've got a total of ten oxygens. All right, so since I've got 10 here, but only two here, I've got to make this equal to 10. So the only thing I can put in front or multiply two by to get 10, I have to multiply it by five and I'm done. So I actually don't think that, you know, that's too bad. Um, it gets worse once you're with odd numbers, once you have odd numbers. Um, so let's look at one problem that can get kind of tricky. All right. So um, I've got ethane, which is C2H6. No, you don't have to memorize the names. All right. Um, I'm actually, uh oh. Um, I'm actually going to erase this right here so I have enough space. Okay. All right. So I've got ethane. So I'm going to add um, oxygen to it. So plus O2 gives me, well, always CO2 and H2O. There's never a question about that. Almost done. Alrighty, challenging part. I've got two carbons here, one carbon here. So I need to put a two out front here. All right. Now I have, now I need to do my, uh, my hydrogens. I've got six here, but I've only got two here. So I need to put a three out front here. Okay, let's count them up. I got two times two, which is four, plus three. So I've got seven oxygens. As soon as you see that odd number, you should be worried because you need to multiply something by two to get seven. All right, and specifically what you need to multiply it by is, I'm going to put it up here, three and a half because three and a half times two is seven. All right, now, Yes, I can write that here right now, but no, I cannot leave it like that. So what I'm going to need to do is multiply this entire reaction by a number that makes this a whole number. And specifically what I can multiply this entire reaction by is by 2. So I'm going to make this a 2. 
could multiply this by 2 and that makes it 7. Multiply this by 2 and that makes it a 4. And multiply this by 2 and that makes it a 6. And now I'm done. Right? So this is one of the most challenging types of reactions I can give you. Rather than freaking out about the 7 and the 2 and oh my gosh, what do I do? Just make it a decimal and then figure out what you have to do to make it a whole number. And what we had to do here was just multiply it by 2. All right, so what I want you guys to do right now is complete three and four by yourselves, and then that's the end of this video. Nice and short.